Abby Tedros here at the WBTV News Now desk. Coming to you live on our WBTV News app. Maybe you're watching on Facebook Live. And right now, we are keeping a close watch on COVID-19 and the fight against COVID and the multiple variants that we are dealing with as we get closer to the holiday season and Christmas in particular. So Omicron is currently the dominant variant and it has been detected in all 50 states with the exception of two. You can see it on this map right here. Oklahoma, South Dakota, no reported cases as of this morning, but every other state Omicron has been detected. And keep in mind that the first case in the US reported three weeks ago. So this is fast, quickly spreading, and it is now responsible for nearly 75% of new cases. All of this is happening as we are getting ready for the holidays, making our holiday plans, maybe traveling. Uh, Charlotte Douglas International Airport letting us know that they are expecting a very busy travel season at the airport. We also know that AAA says a lot of people are hitting the roadways to visit their families this Christmas and for other holidays. So joining me now to answer all of your questions that you have when it comes to the Omicron variant, what you need to know before you gather, we have a uh, Novant Health Medical Director, Dr. Charles Breger. It is great to have you here, uh, Dr. Breger. I'm gonna start by asking you a couple of questions while we wait for our viewers at home who are listening in to drop their comments in the Facebook comment section. I will definitely ask those questions for them. But in the meantime, right now it feels like it's kind of a flashback to March of 2020 when we were dealing with a surge of COVID-19 cases, another surge right now, but health officials are saying that it isn't as urgent as it was in March of 2020. So explain to me why it isn't, or it doesn't seem like it's uh, as much of a concern as it was last year. A little bit different from a where we were about a year ago with this and that's because a year ago was before we really had any significant amount of our population vaccinated and we had a huge number of people that were in the hospital getting very sick and a huge number of fatalities so with omicron you know fortunately the majority of our population of our communities are vaccinated which does provide good protection against omicron especially if you have received a booster dose and another factor is while Omicron does appear to be very contagious, and it is amazing that in one week it went from, you know, a prevalence of about three or four percent of COVID cases to now the majority in one week is just unbelievable. But fortunately, it appears that Omicron is causing less severe disease, especially among vaccinated people. So for that reason, we're not seeing at this point, at least the rapid rise in number of people in our hospitals or in ICUs or on ventilators at this point. Now, we don't really know what the future holds. We are certainly very concerned about the fact the holidays are coming and COVID cases are increasing very rapidly in the country again. So talking about some of those resources that you just mentioned, good news there. We have the vaccine. People are getting their boosters before they head out. Also seeing a lot of people getting their COVID tests. Uh, during a news conference yesterday with Governor Roy Cooper and Dr. Mandy Cohen, they talked about, yes, people are getting tested, but when they find out if they're positive, they don't necessarily know the variant that they tested positive for. So how are people supposed to take the appropriate medical action as far as treatment is concerned. Also in the news conference, they talked about uh, monoclonal treatment not being as effective against the Omicron variant versus the Delta variant. So walk me through how someone who gets a positive test is supposed to navigate that. So someone who has had an exposure to COVID, you know, should be tested a couple of days after they've had that close contact exposure to COVID-19. Similarly, if you're having signs or symptoms of COVID, you should go and get tested. So when you're tested for COVID, most of the tests that we're using are very effective tests. They're very accurate. They will let you know if you do have COVID or do not have COVID. And if you have COVID, then in order to figure out what it is, you know, what happens is a, a certain number of specimens and more than used to happen are sent to state laboratories to have the genetic material of the COVID virus sequenced so that we can find out exactly what variant you may have. And that is how we have found out that this Omicron has become the dominant strain very recently. Now, when it comes down for what people need to do, you know, still, you know, just generally, COVID is COVID. COVID is very contagious. Uh, it rapidly spreads through families and communities. 
if you have signs or symptoms of COVID, you should immediately isolate yourself and go for testing. And you know whether you have Delta variant or Omicron variant or some other variant that may yet to be determined or identified, it still means you need to isolate, you need to hydrate, you need to take good care of yourself. If you're at higher risk for more serious disease, then you should of course be uh, reaching out to uh, your provider to find out what options are available. Uh, there, there are some concerns that the monoclonal antibodies that have become a mainstay of treatment to keep people out of the hospital and for preventing more serious cases of COVID may not be quite as effective, but keep in mind we, are have, we have new technology and new medications being developed all the time. You know, fortunately our, our pharmaceutical industry in, is you know, state of the art, you know, using the latest technology to develop new medications. Uh, I think that, you know, newer monoclonal antibodies are hopefully going to be more effective, very effective at helping prevent serious complications of Omicron, as well as we have some oral medications that have come uh, to be approved under emergency youth authorization recently that are shown to reduce the severity. And, you know, along with other treatments we have learned, you know, over the past year or two of dealing with COVID. All right, we are getting some good viewer questions and a lot of people asking about uh, knowing the difference between Omicron versus Delta um, and how to navigate that. So right now you are unable to know whether which specific variant you test positive for, but the best course of action is to seek uh, assistance from your medical provider. I uh, also wanna ask you about, uh, so there are no specific tests. Uh, there is another question here. How can you detect the difference? Or let's talk about symptoms here. So before you even get the test, maybe you have a runny nose, you're feeling a little congested. How do you know um, the difference between COVID versus the flu? That is a great question. And, and I thank the viewer for asking that question. So it's very difficult to tell the difference between a common cold and the flu and some other flu-like illness and COVID. Um, you know, COVID, you know, the traditional COVID that we first saw at the beginning was, you know, typically associated with significant cough, fever, often loss of taste, and other things like scratchy throat, runny nose, headache, fever, body aches, other things like that. And now with the Omicron, it does seem in particular to have perhaps less severe symptoms. And you know, I think with Delta also, there was some degree of less severe symptoms. And so we know that cough and cold and flu season is going around, but COVID is ramping up again with another surge. And this may be a, a, a very serious high prevalence surge. We'll have to see what happens over the holidays and coming in January. So we cannot attribute a sore throat, runny nose to just being a cold. You always need to consider whether or not you may have COVID. And we strongly want people who are having really any kind of upper respiratory symptoms to please go contact a provider or go get tested, find out if you have COVID. Many places are doing simultaneous testing for COVID and flu. And if it's appropriate, they may want to check you for strep throat also, although we're not seeing uh, nearly as much strep throat as we are flu and, and COVID in particular. So don't think that, please don't think that a scratchy throat and a runny nose might just be a cold. Consider COVID and get tested, especially if you've had a exposure or you know that, that you know, COVID has really increased in your community. Uh, getting more questions about symptoms. So could you uh, one more time draw this distinction, if any, between Delta and Omicron as far as what those symptoms may look like? Um, I don't think we can make any clear distinctions. We just have kind of observed that with Omicron, it does seem like it's milder symptoms. So maybe less fever, maybe not as much cough, not as much difficulty breathing. Uh, often we're seeing congestion, runny nose, scratchy throat with it. I also think we're not seeing as much loss of smell and taste as we had previously. So there, there really isn't any clear differentiators in symptoms between Delta or Omicron or influenza or cold. All right, so you're just gonna have to be careful. And I do wanna ask about 
Christmas, people are traveling, getting ready to gather with family members. I think the most obvious question first, should people change their plans if they are planning on gathering with friends and family this holiday? I think that we need to think very seriously about whether or not it's a good idea to gather with friends or family who are not part of your pod, not part of your core group to get together with over the holidays. You know, and, and I hate to say that because we all want so much to celebrate the holidays as we're used to in years gone by, and we will get back to that again, but we're not there yet. So I would say, you know, especially if you're someone who is unvaccinated or you're someone who is at risk for more serious disease, or you're going to see someone or spend time with someone who is elderly or at risk for more serious disease. You really need to, to weigh whether it's worth the risk of, of you or someone else having asymptomatic or, or unknown COVID and bringing it into a situation where someone could get very sick or even, or even die from COVID. So recommendations are changing. You know, we are we are seeing that. You know, uh, yesterday Governor Cooper and Secretary Cohen recommended that you know we go back to masking indoors, even if you're fully vaccinated. Go back to more social distancing. Think twice about holiday travel. I, I think it's not. I, I personally, you know, am not planning on getting into an airport anytime soon and being around all those people. I think that you know traveling to different parts of the country and being exposed to a lot of people it just puts everyone at greater risk. Now, it is certainly appropriate to also think about getting your booster. And we really think that people should get a booster dose if they're eligible for getting a booster dose. And most recent CDC guidance on this does does clearly favor uh, you know, getting a booster dose with either the Moderna or the Pfizer mRNA vaccines. They're shown to produce higher antibody levels and more protection. That's one of the other issues we have seen with this uh, COVID surge, starting with Delta a couple months ago, is many people who completed their primary COVID immunization series more than six months ago have had significant decline in antibody levels, just like with what happens after six months after a flu shot or many other vaccines. Immunity tends to subside more than a bit after six months or so. But your body does kind of remember the immune response you had previously. And by getting a booster, it very quickly produces high levels of antibodies, which are thought to be very protective against Omicron as well as Delta. So, you know, please, you know, please go ahead and get your boosters if you have not. While it is, you don't really have, it takes two weeks to develop the proper antibody levels after getting a, a COVID booster dose. So, you know, Christmas is less than a week away now, uh, but still in the big picture to help stop this pandemic and stop the spread of COVID, we really strongly feel people need to get vaccinated, first of all, and they need to get booster doses when it's appropriate for them to get it. So you mentioned antibodies. I do see a couple of questions about that. So we'll get to that in a moment. But I do want to go back to those who are going to take the risk this holiday season. I know that you mentioned that you're planning on staying home. Uh, for those who say, hey, we're vaccinated, we got the booster shot, we're going to take the risk, either go on an airplane, maybe hit the road. Um, what are your thoughts about those who are visiting people who may be immunocompromised, the elderly, uh, and they're likely going to pass through multiple resting stops, be in confined spaces like an airplane? They may test positive before they head out on their journey, but maybe they do test or test negative before they head out on their journey and then test positive after the fact. Uh, should they get a rapid test before they go visit someone who's immunocompromised? Yes, I, I think that it makes perfect sense to give as much protection as possible to immune compromised people, elderly people, others who are at higher risk to go ahead and, and get tested before you travel. We are seeing wider and wider recommendations for people to get tested within three days before they travel to find out if they may have COVID. And if you do test positive, of course, you should not go. So that is part of the strategy to help uh, prevent the spread, the ongoing and worsening spread of COVID. And the a couple other things are so if you are fully immunized and boosted and you text and you test negative 
and you decide to go, you really want to talk it through with the people you're going to be with. You want to really make sure that everyone is fully vaccinated. You want to really understand who may be at higher risk for more severe illness or hospitalization or death. And you want to really understand the importance of continuing to mask, practice hand hygiene, social distance as much as you can. You know, it, it was nice back in the in May, right, when, you know, COVID had dropped significantly and people were getting vaccinated and, and the masking mandates were being lifted and people were, were told if they were fully vaccinated, you could travel and, and hug each other and things like that. Well, we've had, a, we've had a significant setback. And let's remember that this pandemic requires the buy-in of everyone, everyone in the world to get through this pandemic because if there is a part because international travel happens and, and viruses spread all over the world quickly and if some part of the world has another bad variant um, develop because of a low incidence of a vaccination rate among their population it can quickly spread all over the world and lead to another surge again so we want to make sure that people understand the importance of vaccinations and boosters, which is which is the absolute foundational thing to stopping this pandemic. But in addition to that, if you are going to travel over the holidays, please do wear your masks, socially distance, practice hand hygiene, have you know read online about the safest ways you can have meals and serve meals and it, it does involve things like perhaps having one person dish out food for each person and they socially distance when they're you know getting their plates dished out by one person and everyone has masks on and 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 you do the best you can to set up tv tables and other tables so that you can socially distance more than six feet apart while you take your mask off to eat and this is not fun no one no one is enjoying this but the reality is that you know covid has killed more than 800,000 americans already and unfortunately in the present year 2021 more than 450,000 americans have died from covid despite the fact that vaccinations have been available. Now, it is true, of course, that the vast majority of those who have died have been unvaccinated, but still, we're not done with this pandemic. And, you know, it's looking like 2022 is going to start off in a rough way again. Dr. Berger, I'm looking at some of our viewer questions here. Rachel Goodman is asking, she says she's trying to look at the glass half full. Is there a chance that Omicron will help build antibodies and possibly get to herd immunity? Yes. So, you know, we have seen, you know, lots of people already across the country and across the world have had COVID once or twice. Some people may have even have had it three times. And each time you get COVID, it does help build antibodies as well as cell mediated immunity, which is a kind of a, a different way that your immune system helps fight infections over time. And so that's that's great and if you combine the natural immunity that you get by having the illness along with the passive immunity of having the vaccines to build additional antibodies it really helps jump start and and get your immune system going to produce even more and more antibodies so yes getting infected does prov provide some infection although we've heard a lot of people who do get sick quite sick again with their second infection. Combine that with, with the vaccines and we are going to get better protection. And, and at the end, at the end, all these things, all the vaccinations we get and the infections we may unfortunately get are all going to gradually build uh, immunity over time. But we don't know where this is going, right? This is, this is a, a novel virus. It's, it's been a, a terrible pandemic. And we just don't know, you know what's going to happen in the future with future variants or, or how many people may end up getting very sick again. We are certainly very much um, very happy to see that the hospitalization rate has fallen and the death rate has fallen, especially among vaccinated people. Again, the importance of vaccination can't be stressed enough, but we still don't know where this is gonna lead. We, we do know that, you know, uh, we, we all need to do everything we can to get our immunity up as much as we can. Dr. Berger, looking at some more questions from our viewers, Debbie Cooper is asking, 
a localized question as far as Novant Health's fight against COVID here in the Charlotte area. How many breakthrough cases are you all seeing with Omicron now being of concern for those who are fully vaccinated versus those who are unvaccinated? So I don't have specific numbers to give you regarding it. I, I will say that we are seeing a higher and higher number of people who have been fully vaccinated, uh, who, who are getting COVID, and who are fully vaccinated and have had the booster and are still getting COVID. But you know, it's really important to stress that while we are seeing these breakthrough cases, it's the most important thing to remember is we don't want to get very sick. We don't want to end up in the hospital. We don't want to end up on a respirator and we don't want to die from COVID. And even though we're seeing more and more breakthrough cases, the cases tend to be quite mild. People are not ending up in the hospital. Almost everyone in our hospital who, who has needed hospital care for COVID has been unvaccinated still. All right, Dr. Prajay, looking at another question. Well, you did answer this one from Serene. She says with the rise in another surge, do you still recommend wearing masks and six feet of social distancing? Of course, that mask mandate is still in effect uh, in Mecklenburg County, and you did recommend that. Um, let me ask you this while we continue to monitor this comment section. I uh, want to know if you're all together, everyone is vaccinated and boosted, and then someone test positive. So during the gathering, you become exposed to COVID. What's the next course of action? So if you get exposed, you should be tested uh, a couple of days after you've had that exposure. And if that test is negative, you should again be tested about five days after your initial negative test. You also want to be very mindful of being watchful for signs and symptoms for the full 14 days that COVID is potentially contagious and could infect you after you have had the exposure. Uh, and other thing to keep in mind is so you're at a get together and someone tests positive. Keep in mind that if you have been masked and you're practicing good hand hygiene and, and also very important to remember the importance of social distancing. So if you know you have a cousin or someone that you were, you were around at a, at a Christmas get together who tests positive, but really you were more than six feet away from that person virtually the entire time and you were masked the entire time and that person was masked virtually the entire time except perhaps when you were eating and again i want to stress the importance of that social distancing happening while you're eating that is where we're seeing so many people transmitting covid from one person to another is when they take their masks off and they sit too close together and they're eating for 20 or 30 minutes and that's where exposures and the spread of covid happens very readily so remember to social distance and remember to wear your masks and be especially cognizant of the social distancing while you're eating and drinking one other comment about masking is studies have shown that the surgical medical grade masks you know the the disposable medical masks that have the little uh, metal loop across the bridge of the nose and they are fit fairly tightly around your ears and, and around your face, cover the openings well, do provide better protection for you as well as better protection for those around you from either getting the COVID into you, on top of you, into your mouth, into your nose, or spreading it to someone else. Keep in mind also, it's important when you're masked to not touch your face, get your mask set, then don't touch your eyes, don't touch your nose. Remember to use hand sanitizer regularly to keep from incidentally or accidentally introducing COVID uh, onto your face or into your eyes or into your nose where it, it can cause infection. Dr. Berger, looking at some of these comments, Cameron Taylor, who likely joined us a little late, asked, how do you test for which kind of virus it is? That's something that the consumer or a potential patient can't necessarily get access to, right? So. They go to those testing sites, they'll find out if they test positive or negative, but that information as far as which specific variant is limited to health experts, correct? Yeah, that, that is correct. Okay. At least that's how it is now. I think that I imagine that, you know, with the technology that our laboratories have, you know, it, it may be that in later in 2022, there may be some specific um, rapid tests that can be done that do detect 
individual variants. I'm not saying that will happen, but we are seeing, you know, our, the technology we have is, is amazing and that may become easier to identify much more quickly in the future. So let me ask you this while we wait for some more questions. Uh, for those who are unvaccinated, so with the Omicron variant, the first death reported in Texas um, was an unvaccinated individual who I believe had previously had COVID, a form of COVID. So what are your, what's your advice for those who refuse to get vaccinated and may potentially be gathering this holiday season? So, you know, I think the best advice to people who are unvaccinated is really to not go around people in social gatherings. You're, you're putting yourself at much higher risk, and you're also putting those you may be around who are at higher risk for having a bad outcome. And, you know, to those who, you know, have been resistant to uh, getting vaccinated, you know, I, I think that it's really so dismaying that there's been so much misinformation promulgated in social media and other places about the, vac the vaccines. The vaccines are incredibly safe. There have been billions and billions of doses given and they're very safe. We have people that, have, myself included, who got their first dose more than a year ago and my second dose almost a year ago and my booster dose two months ago who have had you know, no adverse effects and adverse effects are very rare. And you know, you know, we, don't, we don't want people to die. We don't want people to end up in the hospital. And it's really still primarily affecting our unvaccinated people. And so please don't, don't listen to information that, that's published by people who really don't know. We need to trust the CDC and the World Health Organization and our, our state health departments and others who really have our safety and our health really driving all the recommendations. So, you know, now and now I think more than ever where we're seeing this incredible rise of Omicron, uh, especially, you know, among unvaccinated people, please, reconsider. We want to bring an end to this pandemic. In order to bring an end to this pandemic, we have to stop these mutations and variants from happening. And when millions of people continue to get infected with COVID, it's going to lead to more and more variants. And who knows when this pandemic will end if we don't understand that we need to work together and support each other by getting vaccinated and getting boosters and getting additional doses of COVID as, it's, as the need arises. We're going to be needing more doses of vaccine in 2022 and probably in the future. I, I, I certainly can foresee see that, that at least annual COVID vaccines will be recommended to people just as flu vaccines are to try to keep us safe and, and to try to keep this pandemic to a minimum. Right. We do have a last call for questions. I know we've kept you for 30 minutes, so I do appreciate you and your time, Dr. Berger. I am also looking at the comment section here. And I am taking a look. Uh, it seems as though Karen Hensley says, how long does the booster last? If you want to touch on that uh, briefly, and then we can, we can wrap things up. So we don't really know yet how long the booster is going to last. We do know that with additional doses of vaccine, it does produce even stronger immune responses to give us even more protection. It's, we certainly anticipate that the booster dose will last at least six months and perhaps longer. We really need to do kind of what we call longitudinal studies over time where we do blood tests and, and, and look at populations who have been boosted at certain time intervals and, and, and check antibody levels and, and look at uh, future infection rates, et cetera, to really get a better idea. So uh, I, I think the answer is we're anticipating at least six months and we're hoping it'll be significantly longer than that. All right, Dr. Bridget, thank you so much for your time. Wishing you a great happy holiday uh, with uh, not too much uh, chaos in the hospital. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay safe.